Welcome back, everyone. You are in for another adventure because we are back this week with Miss Beth and Miss Liz's super awesome librarian vlog. Good times, good times. Yep. And just like every week, we have got some exciting things for you. Mm -hmm. And we're going to kick it off in my most favorite way possible. Miss Beth, you told us a joke last week, and I need to know. I need to know. I need to know what was the answer. Okay. Are we ready? Why are bananas never lonely? Because they hang out in bunches. <laughs> ba -dum. Ha, 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 ha. Effect. All right, Miss Liz, are we going to play a game today? We are going to play several games today, actually. Uh, we are, we are, we are. It was super exciting. I think this might have been one of my favorite games that we've done so far. I'm not going to lie, me too, because not only was it a game that we could do in the same spot, it mm -hmm. was for social distancing. Mm -hmm. Definitely made me laugh. Actually, and the good thing about these challenges is we tried to make them with things that you can find around your house. So for this week's games, we did a bunch of one-minute challenges. Mm -hmm. Our first challenge was you had to blow up some balloons. You could use one, two, or three balloons, and you had one minute on the clock to try to keep them up all in the air. We could not do three. <laughs> I would recommend starting with one or two, but you can see the footage of us failing miserably with three. Yep, let's cut to that right now. So after we tried that game, we decided to go with another one. Because we were not good at that challenge. We were not good at that one. So for this one, you could either use 21 cups or 36 cups. You had one minute to try to stack them up and get them all the way back down in one stack. 21 cups was definitely easier than 36. We both yeah. managed to get 21. Once again, we failed miserably at doing 36. Yes, and we even managed to get some friends in to do the 36 cup challenge. And we found out it wasn't just us. Yep, so I felt a little bit better about that. But take a look and see how we did with this very hard challenge. It was something. able to do the 36 challenge please 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 film it and please 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 send it to us i want to see it done i want it will be very impressed yes and even if you do the 21 cup challenge and you want to share it with us we totally want to see that too we'll still be impressed yes and for our last one minute challenge we had to take three balls and try to bounce them on a table and catch them in a bucket on our head we did a little bit better this time so we did, was, yes. we did not completely have to crawl off into a corner of shame no, and I will say that Miss Beth was like the champ at this game. I actually did one. Hooray! So check this out. I think this one you guys will have a blast with. This one was definitely my favorite game. And the really cool thing with this game is it's, is it's also really fun to play with a partner. You guys can stand six feet apart, have the table in the middle, like Miss Beth and I did. We will show you guys how that works. And what one person does is bounce the ball and the other person tries to catch it in the bucket. It does not need to be on your head for this one, though. I mean, you could if you wanted to. That would be pretty cool. Yes. But take a look and let us know how you think it went. tried any of these one minute challenges or have any of your own that you love please let us know we would love to see what you guys are doing and if you're anything like me after these one minute challenges 
I was exhausted and all I wanted was a good book to read, which is perfect. All right, for my first book this week, I have Caught Nabbing History's Most Wanted by Georgia Bragg. A humorous look at how famous people get caught, including Joan of Arc, Blackbeard, Al Capone, and more, have given the good guys a run for their money throughout the ages. And my first book is one that I talked about last week, so if you guys are loyal viewers, you will have heard this title. It is Six Stats, a story of young Lewis Braille by Jen Bryant. This is an inspiring picture book biography of Lewis Braille, a blind boy so determined to read that he invented his own alphabet. Lewis Braille was just five years old when he lost his sight. He was a clever boy, determined to live like everyone else, and what he wanted more than anything else was to be able to read. Even at the School for the Blind in Paris, there were no books for him. And so he invented his own alphabet, a whole new system for writing that could be read by touch, a system so ingenious that it is still used by the blind community today. All right, next up is Jedi Academy by Jeffrey Brown. This is for all of my Star Wars fans. Rowan's one dream is to leave home and attend Pilot Academy like his older brother, father, and grandfather. But just as Rowan is mysteriously denied entrance to pilot school, he's invited to attend Jedi Academy. This novel follows Rowan's first year at Jedi Academy, where under the tutelage of Master Yoda, he learns that he possesses more strength and potential than he ever could have dreamed. Oh, and he learns other important things too like how to make baking soda volcano, fence with a lightsaber, slow dance with a girl, and lift boulders with the force. My next book, it is Witches in Training. It is part of the Hexvet series, which is a graphic novel by Sam Davies. In a world where magic is an ordinary part of daily life, two young apprentice veterinarians pursue their dreams of caring for supernatural creatures. Have you ever wondered where witches' cats go when they pull out a claw? Or what do you do with a pygmy phoenix with a case of bird flu? Nan and Claren have you covered. They're the best veterinarian witches of all time. At least, they're trying to be. But when an injured spectral wolf beast from another realm stumbles into their lives, Nan and Claren have to put down their enchanted potions and face the biggest test of their magical medical careers outside of the clinic. All right, next up, I have The Bridge Home by Padma Venkatraman. Life is harsh in Chennai's teeming streets, so when runaway sisters Viji and Ruku arrive, their prospects look grim. Very quickly, 11-year-old Viji discovers how vulnerable they are in this uncaring and dangerous world. Fortunately, the girls find shelter and friendship on an abandoned bridge. With two homeless boys, Muti and Arul, the boys form a group. The group forms a family of sorts. And while making a living scavenging the city's trash heaps in the pits, the kids find plenty to laugh about and take pride in too. After all, they are now the bosses of, them, of themselves and no longer dependent on untrustworthy adults. But when illness strikes, Viji must decide whether to risk seeking help from strangers or to keep holding on to their fragile, hard-fought freedom. Next up, I have a picture book called The Panda Problem by Deborah Underwood. Every story needs a problem, but Panda doesn't have a problem. Unless Panda is the problem? My last book is Mr. Monkey Bakes a Cake by Jeff Mack. Curious George meets Mr. Bean in this adorable new easy reader series from author-illustrator Jeff Mack that follows a lovable Mr. Monkey around on his wacky adventures. Mr. Monkey bakes a cake. He can't wait to win a ribbon, but first he has to carry it to the contest. What could possibly go wrong? And my last book for you guys is The Parker Inheritance by Varian Johnson. The letter waits in a book, in a box, in an attic, in an old house in Lambert, South Carolina. It's waiting for Candace Miller. When Candace finds the letter, she isn't sure she should read it. It's addressed to her grandmother, after all, who left Lambert in a cloud of shame. But the letter describes a young woman named Siobhan Washington, an injustice that happened decades ago, a mystery enfolding the letter writer, and the fortune that awaits the person who solves the puzzle. Grandma tried and failed, but now Candace has another chance. So with the help of Brandon Jones, the quiet boy across the street, she begins to decipher the clues in the letter. The challenges will lead them deep into Lambert's history full of ugly deeds, forgotten heroes, and one great love, and deeper into their own families with their own unspoken secrets. Can they find the fortune and fulfill the letter's promise before the summer ends? So, Miss Liz. Yes. Is it time to find the things? It is time to find the things. Yay! Find the things, find the things, also known as... Yay! All right, and this week, just like every week in the past, you guys are going to have five minutes to find five items. Time will go up, you will go find them, and it will be great. Mm -hmm. 
All right, are you, Ms. Beth, are you ready to hear what we need to find this week? I am ready. All right, so this week, the first item you're gonna to wanna to find is a magazine. The second thing that you're gonna to try to find is either a coloring book or a coloring paper. The third thing you're gonna to wanna to find is a crayon. The fourth thing that you're gonna to wanna to find is a napkin. And the fifth and final thing you're gonna to wanna to find is your favorite toy. With all of those items being said, timer's gonna go up, you have five minutes. Ready, set, go.
All right, time is up. How did you guys do? I hope you found all the items. I hope you had fun. And I hope you tune in next week to see what other crazy things I make you guys find. I'm impressed with all the things you keep thinking of for everyone to find. Thank you. I, I, I'm not going to lie. I am inspired by the things that are around my house. So mm -hmm. it might be around your house. You guys could also try thinking of your own five-minute scavenger hunt to try at home. You could have all your family members do it. Yep. I actually encourage it. It's very fun to watch people run and try to find stuff, mm -hmm. which is why we make you do it every week. Mm -hmm. And now it is time for my most favorite part of the Awesome Librarian vlog. Miss <laughs> <laughs> Beth. Yes? What's this week's joke? So what would you do if I told you I just didn't have a joke? I'd get up and leave and go home and cry. Well, all right. I, all right, I don't, want it, I don't want you to do that. Don't, don't do that. I have a joke. Please okay. don't cry. Please don't leave. Okay. <laughs> all right, everybody. What starts with a P and ends with an E and has a thousand letters in it? Tune in next week and I will let you know. And we still have not come up with a what, sign off. We're yeah. still working on that. Yep. Maybe waiting for a while. We're not good at this sort of thing. We're but for suggestions. You guys can tell us what you think we should say when we sign off. Yes, please. We, we will see you next time, though. Bye, everybody. Bye.